You seem to be glowing. Yeah, a little bit. I wonder, if you, I wonder if, why. And if you don't know, you don't follow us on Instagram and Twitter for juicy content, weenies. It's not the only juicy content. <laughs> I'm Rick. If you don't know what this is about, uh, go check out Instagram because those of you who've heard me talk about Andrani, she is here. She got here Tuesday. But she went to Utah for some reason. Yeah, it's very but strange. It's in America, so it's fine. Yeah, she's just, it's, it's you know, she's still, we can talk on Messenger. A lot still. of Mormons. Yeah. But she says it's fine. It's true. <laughs> Anyways, today anyway. we're doing a movie review. <laughs> Welcome back to Spooky Month. Spooky Month, Spooky Month, stick a ghost up your butt. Uh, and we are watching, this is our fourth spooky uh, movie of the month, and it is the 2016 Hindi film, Phobia. Which spelled backwards is A-Bob. Any, any significance to A-Bob? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> directed and written by... Uh, a, Pawan Kriplani. And then... Uh, do, 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 all the other people, and then starring basically Radhika Apte, Radhika Apte, and uh, a few other people. So you got um, Amrita Bagchi, um, uh, Satyajit Mishra, Arushnand, Yara Shaswini Dayama. Yes. So, but it's based, it's the Radhika Apte show, Radhika Apte show. Um, essentially. So if you haven't watched it, go watch it. Come back. Uh, we saw. What did we see? We saw Netflix, hey, Amazon. We saw it on Amazon here in America. It's also on Z. It's on Z? It's on Z. Because I actually went to Amazon and it said I had to watch it through Eros and I didn't have my Eros active. Oh, okay. It wasn't Amazon. It says Amazon Prime, but it needed me to do it through oh, Eros. Oh, gotcha. So it actually is on Z. Z5. Okay. I have a problem though, and you, I don't know if you had it on Amazon. There was a subtitle problem. Oh, was there? Yeah. Ooh. Basically, it was censorship bullshit. It was oh, no, the there... fact that whenever there was a bad word, it was dot, dot, dot on the subtitles. Uh, no, I didn't have that on Amazon. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, I hate that. Fucking ridiculous. Yep. Try to censor that. Yeah, yeah, yeah censor that. Anyways, uh, Rick, your initial thoughts, please. Um, so I have to talk in the spoilers about the fullness of my... This is all spoilers. Take. Was, we're just doing all spoilers? Yeah, it's 2016. Okay. All right, it's 2016. Wait, yeah, your initial thoughts. So my, my initial thoughts... The only thing I enjoyed was Radhika Apte's performance. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't anything else really I liked about it. In fact, there's some things I really disliked about it, primarily dealing with storyline, at least on the believability factor, continuity, things of that nature, they were fine. There were some aspects of the believability factor that have to do with agoraphobia, the origins of her agoraphobia, the way her agoraphobia was treated, that was really hard for me to wrap my head around. Um, and parts of the story that I just, I didn't like. So. The only saving grace for me was Radhika Apte because you could basically have her read the names of people in the phone book and she's going to be great. But other than her, I I really didn't like it. Mm, gotcha. Yeah, yeah I, I liked it. I didn't love it. Uh, I, did, I did have some issues as well in terms of the overall stuff that was left out of overall. I think I got basically what they were trying to convey uh, overall, but... Um, and I think there was some good, uh, I was surprised because I thought it was mostly just going to, I didn't know if there was going to be a lot of like scary stuff in it. Mm. I think they did a pretty good job with the suspense of some of it. Um, did any of it scare you? Did you get jump scared at all or? Uh, the only time I was got little, like a little jostle was when the thing came through the wall. Okay. That was basically. The drill. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I don't, I don't scare too easily. Yeah. But I don't either. But for this, and, I, and unfortunately was, I was never once like. But even remotely close to yeah, being scared. But also, I didn't go into the because I I actually expected more of just the drama of her wanting to stay inside yeah. as opposed to full on scary. So there was a, there was a little more suspense than I, I actually anticipated. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about the, the stuff we liked first, especially sure. obviously Radhika Apte. You all know that I think she's the best actress in India uh, overall, um, and one of the best actresses acting. Current. Today, uh, she everything we've seen her in, she is really, really good in, uh, and she has such a such a range. I feel like, and she's so honest in everything she does. I loved her performance, I, even though I, there was there was some stuff that I, if I was writing it, I might have done differently. Absolutely, um, but in terms of her performance, you, I can't critique her performance. Not at all, <laughs> uh, and that's that is really the only saving grace yeah. for me, um, in terms of. Like, because for me, if somebody were to say, shall I watch Phobia? I would say, no. 
Mm. Uh, if you do, I'll tell you that you're going to enjoy Radhika Apte because she's just good. But it's uh, it's like Venom, mm. where Tom Hardy's the saving grace. Yeah. But even more for me because there were so many things in the writing with this that bothered me mm. in terms of what they could have done with the story. Um, but as far as acting concerned, I agree. Everything you said, I agree with you. I can't yeah. argue anything you said about and, about her. And I wasn't too impressed with almost any of the actors. It's not like they were totally, totally bad. Some of them. But um, it's not like one of those things. It's like it's just her. Everyone else is shit. But no one else was really standout for sure. Correct. Um, out, but I did think our, the one that we've seen in multiple series... And in that last movie, which is not out yeah. on the channel, right. she was much better than she was in that. Correct. <laughs> she yes, went she back was. to being back herself, to being who I thought she was a good actress. Being. Correct. Um, that'll come later after Spooky Month. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, yeah, other than that, the, the acting supporting cast I didn't think was great. Not at all. Uh, not not bad, but it's no, just not... No, nothing to, nothing to say while you should not, see their performance Not great. Uh, yeah, it was interesting how they did the story. Um, because, obviously, it's a... Um, I always forget the word if it's... Premonition? Pre premonition? Premonition? Because that's basically the whole story, is that she had premonition. Yes, right? that's the word. Yeah, that that she had premonition yeah, so of the, what was going to take place as part of her yes. uh, struggle of what she was dealing with. Yeah, so it's, it's basically, you, you basically find out she's she envisioned all of this. Cause so that, that's one of the things I did enjoy, is that I they kept you guessing of where it was going. At first, you're like, okay, she's obviously just going insane. She's seeing all this stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Basically, then you went to, is any of this real? Right. Is she just cuckoo nutso um, and all that? Um, but then, obviously, it steered you in the direction of this was all stuff that she was starting with, obviously, her painting from the beginning. Yes. Seeing the last shot. Right. Uh, I thought that whole concept was, was good. I enjoyed that. I don't know if it totally landed because there was some questions I had in terms of, like, Obviously, not really the boyfriend, but that guy, uh, and and what he, <laughs> like his whole vibe was was he actually trying to murder all these people, um, or was it accidental? It kind of really just left that. It really did uh, out in the open, and then obviously, did he mean to? What happened to our um, yeah, yeah, um, Nikki? Yeah, to Nikki Yashishwani Day. What like, happened to her character? Right. She kind of just was there on the floor. Right. Is she dead? I don't know. They just didn't answer any of those questions at all. Correct. Um, and I think the, the vibe I got in terms of him was that, and you guys can tell me if this is wrong or not, he either sexually assaulted or raped her. And that was the thing that she took uh, in, the, in the beginning in the car. He was like, you want to come up? And she's like, just because it happened once, it doesn't happen a thousand times. Mm -hmm. The thing at the end where she, he was basically trying to take advantage of her again, even though she was in this vulnerable state. And then she said all that stuff, your hands disgust me. And so that led me to believe that wasn't like a consensual thing. It was like she was drunk. He took advantage of her. Yeah. Adding to her agoraphobia and then obviously that whole... Um, the taxi thing as well yeah. tacked on to that. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if it was that. That's one of the things is like I wish it was maybe done a little bit better, a little more. Like I, I know you probably a think better. a lot better. Yeah. Than that. Yeah. I. I. Agoraphobia is has so many questions around it. It's such a complex and mysterious challenge that people have to deal with. For for some people its onset is from a traumatic experience, but the majority of the time agoraphobia doesn't really have, like panic attacks, mm. doesn't have a definitive cause. It just occurs. And that's part of the thing that makes it so disconcerting for the person having it, is they can't pinpoint why this happens to me. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the reasons I didn't particularly like the fact that the root of her problem was definitively she'd been raped, so now she has agoraphobia. I would have preferred that we stuck with something a little bit more high IQ mm. and let us wonder what's really wrong with this girl. Mm. Does she really have agoraphobia? Can we point to an actual root cause? Because they left us no question. She was traumatized by a rape. Okay. Mm. What's interesting is that more often than not, agoraphobia isn't caused by a traumatic event. It has that level of mystery. So for example, if you had simply just let it alone, like at the very beginning when she has this premonition 
And you can't differentiate between, is she having a vision, a premonition, or is she hallucinating? Is she agoraphobic? Is she schizophrenic? I would have loved to have not known what she's dealing with. Yeah. Just leave the rape part out, let her be symptomatic, and call the movie Phobia with a question mark. Mm. Just call the movie Phobia. Mm. And let the audience wonder, are we ever going to get the answer to what this is? Yeah. Uh, I, a movie that you should watch instead that gets this right is a um, movie called Repulsion. Mm. It's um, not Franco Zeffirelli. Come on. James Franco. No, he was the Manson Murders. It was the director, famous director. Quentin? No, no, no. Oh. Not, no. The actual director that lived up at that house oh, where the murders took place. Okay, gotcha. Um, I forget. His I can't name. believe I'm forgetting his name. And then he was—he's uh, been out of the United States because he was uh, accused of molesting a kid. Mm. And this is his first English-speaking film. It's called Repulsion. I can't believe I'm forgetting his name right now. It's really getting me mad. But it's a very good black and white film about a woman who has a phobia. It's an actual phobia. She's afraid of men. And it is a psychological thr thriller that's really twisted about this girl who's afraid of men. Mm. If you want to see a movie that is what this could have been, watch Repulsion. You can find it either on Netflix or Amazon. I'm going to look up the director again. And um, that, that the other thing that was too easy to write, it's too easy to make people get angry with somebody who's agoraphobic mm. and just make them dicks. Because somebody who's dealing with agoraphobia for four months and you lose your patience with them, you clearly didn't care about them enough to know what the symptoms of agoraphobia are and how long people have them. And there's a lot of really famous people who have agoraphobia mm. and who have to manage it and live with it. Um, so uh, that, that was the, by far, the, the story, which is movie, movies are storytelling. Yeah. The fact that the story did, didn't have those elements and had the elements it did was the only thing I liked was Radica Opte. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what did you think about the score, though? I thought it was fine. Yeah. Yeah. It, it wasn't... I think that's one of the things that added to some of the suspense. Yeah. Uh, that, that I... that I, I didn't actually expect a lot of suspense in this. Uh, I was... I, I wanted to watch this because it was Radica Opte. Uh, <laughs> I was like, Radica Opte in an apartment. Right. I thought it was basically just going to be... And it was mostly her for the, for the I, most part. The honestly, most. I might have enjoyed the score more if... Like I put down in my notes, at one point when she was uh, really freaking out, the fact that the whole time I know, the reason she's where she is is because she was raped. It's not, I wrote down, it's really no fun watching an innocent woman live a traumatized life after having been raped. I don't, I don't find well, anything- technically in the taxi, she wasn't raped. She was almost raped. <sighs> she was sexually assaulted. S still. Yeah it would be a lot more interesting and I would have been able to really embrace what she's going through as a, mm -hmm. as a scary thing versus I'm not enjoying watching a girl who is sexually violated yeah. and has been traumatized by the experience now be traumatized. Mm. Um, and I also, you know, lines like, it isn't real. Yeah, I, that's one of the issues I had with the supporting cast and the, the writing of it, obviously, yes. and the, the virtual reality whatever yes her, her therapist was terrible yes. and i i kind of get why the the guy was being a dick because he is an asshole right and that was his character he, right he didn't actually care about her and she's like it was one of those like he's a terrible person but he likes to make her think that he cares right. about her right so he could maybe get in her pants again right uh and all that kind of stuff but yeah all like the therapist and then like the i don't know if it was her sister in the beginning um well and and the other part like the disconnect, and part of this is, is I know this, I don't know agoraphobia as well, but I do know mental illness as well because my dad has battled mental illness his whole life. The moment she started having things that could be hallucinatory, hmm. whether they were premonitions or visions, whatever they were, they were, they were in the category of being hallucinatory. I immediately thought, this isn't agoraphobia because that's not an aspect. If you look up all the symptoms of agoraphobia, there's never anything in it that has anything to do with hallucinations. Well, that part is more about the premonitions and not right. the agoraphobia. Right, right. But they diagnosed her as agoraphobic. Well, I think she is, and then she, but also, overall, but she has a lot of the symptoms of agoraphobia she didn't demonstrate. Yeah. Uh, so it was just, that's why for me it was just, I felt like we didn't do our homework on agoraphobia and we used, it just, but Radhika Opte, again, yeah. 
<laughs> no, she's she's one of the actors that I genuinely think, like Tom Hardy. Yeah. No. Uh, you can give them anything, and they're they might not be great, but they're not gonna they're never gonna be bad. Yeah. They're never gonna suck. I would be shocked if Rodica ever put in a bad performance. I genuinely Absolutely think you shocking. could give her anything, and she's gonna justify what she's doing and be believable, and you're gonna go. Damn it! I tried to get you to suck, but I can't. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the movie I yeah. don't. Well, well, what would you give? Because I would give it probably a B minus. Oh yeah, no, I. Scored, I know you wouldn't give it. I that, gave it a D. A D. Yeah. yeah. My scores and the reason I gave it those scores was because primarily my my score for uh, story was really low. Out of twenty five points out of a hundred, I, I gave it only thirteen out of twenty five. Believability, I gave fifteen out of twenty. Not because of continuity or editing or sound or things like that, but because the believability of her not really demonstrating agoraphobic things, hallucinatory mm -hmm. things that were okay to do a premonition, but it doesn't make sense in the context of what we're dealing with. Um, score was actually was 14 out of 15. Mm -hmm. um, directing and DOP was 14 out of 20, just because nothing was standout-ish for me. Mm -hmm. So all told, the, the saving grace that made it be a D, which is when I give a film a D, I say, didn't like it, don't waste your money. I really don't think you need to watch it. If it had been an F, I would have said it's awful. <laughs> don't watch it. You can't say this is awful because she's so good. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely don't think it's that bad. No. But uh, I would probably give it a... I, I don't have a grading you'd, you'd scale. You'd give it a... You'd put I'd it in the B range? B minus. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but we all know Rick's an idiot. So let us know what you thought about this film down in the comments below. Also, what should be the next spooky film and please... Rodic Opte film yes. uh, that we can watch down below.